So what we're doing is we're here on the uh, BibViz website, and we're just continuing to look at some of these Bible contradictions and just kind of to understand the mindset of someone who looks at this and says, I'm not going to take the context. I'm not going to take the words for what they mean. Uh, I'm just going to say, you know, if you say this in this passage and you say this other thing in this other passage, then clearly it's a contradiction. Uh, a lot of it gets boiled down to it is a misunderstanding of what's being said. It's a misunderstanding of the context. It's a misunderstanding of what's being talked about. Uh, this series is actually named after a book titled by a man by the name of Chet Kulis. Uh, it was his doctoral dissertation as he worked through this process. And uh, what he did is he actually looked at a lot of the numbers. And uh, so there are a lot of numbers that are apparently contradictory, and we'll, we'll look into those uh, at some future date. But here you are looking at the screen, and you can see just all the contradictions that supposedly exist. And I, I like this section right here that's just absolutely full uh, of supposed contradictions. And uh, I'm going to minimize this, this little top corner here so you can see. Um, again, you've got uh, why do bad things happen to good people? That's a, a great study. Is it wrong to have sex outside of marriage? Should we obey human or divine laws? Um, and uh, let's, I mean, there's just so many points here. Uh, what kind of animals may we eat? Uh, who owns the earth? Uh, was Joseph the father of Jesus or not? And uh, so this, this one's actually rather interesting. Let's click on this one. I haven't read through what verses they bring up, but I think I know where they're going to go with it. So take a look at this. Um, is Joseph the father of Jesus? Now, for those of you who don't know, Joseph is the adopted father of Jesus. Okay, so Jesus is born of a virgin. And so here's what you got. Jesus is the father of Jesus. Now, Acts 2.30, therefore being a prophet, knowing that God had sworn no to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ. So it's talking about David um, and and. If you follow David's line all the way down to Joseph, you, you then don't have a connection to Jesus. Uh, of this man's seed has God, according to his promise, raised up unto Israel a Savior, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David. So what they're doing is they're assuming that the only genealogy that we see is the line of Joseph that comes all the way down to Jesus. And so therefore, Joseph would have to have been the biological father of Jesus, according to this reasoning, if, if you're following my logic. Uh, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify of the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. For verily he took on him the nature of angels. Uh, he took not on him the nature of angels, but the him of the seed of Abraham. So what they're doing is, um, I, I, I don't see where this verse actually comes into play, this one, uh, Hebrews 2.16, because whether you follow either genealogy or whether you know he's the descendant of Mary, the fact is... Um, the Bible does talk about the seed of a woman periodically in the Bible, and so it is entirely likely that you could say Mary passed the Abrahamic line all the way down to Jesus. So so, so there you have it. That one's kind of dumb. Um, Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Joseph was, so that's, that. the reason they're saying that Joseph was the father is because Joseph was a descendant of David, and they claim that Mary was not, and then with all of this, you then have that Joseph would have had to be the father. Uh, this one, Joseph was not the father. So Matthew 1, 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So a virgin uh, conception here. Uh, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called son of the highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, the power of the whole the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall call the Son of God. Um Again, they put all these verses together, but they don't actually say the contradiction. Uh, I understand enough about this topic that I can tell you what they're trying to say, but if you were just looking at this, that it proves absolutely nothing. So so let me let me give you the behind the scenes. There is a genealogy in Matthew, there's the genealogy in Luke. One genealogy traces the line of uh, David all the way down through Joseph to Jesus, and then the other one traces all the way down through um, from Adam all the way down. And so one of the genealogies, specifically the one in Matthew, is trying to prove that Jesus has the uh, hereditary pedigree to be considered a son of David. And so, so you follow that genealogy all the way down, Joseph adopts him, and that is entirely appropriate. And so you could make the case that Jesus legally has a connection all the way back to to David. Now, as far as the Luke uh, the Luke passages, um, you will notice that there are some similarities. But what you have there in Luke is you may actually have the genealogy of Mary. 
uh, coming all the way down. And uh, so there, that is one of the takes, and so that would nullify all this altogether because Mary would be a descendant of David as well. Some others believe that that is another genealogy of Joseph, and the whole reason it works that way is there's such a thing called leveret marriage, where leveret marriage is this complicated topic. I, you can go research on your own, but I'll, I'll summarize it. Uh, in Jewish tradition, if, if, if I were to marry a woman and we and I were to die before she gave birth to a son that would carry on my name, my brother would be responsible to marry her, and the first son they had would be considered mine. Uh, it would be named like in, in honor of, of my line. And so that would be the idea of leveret marriage. And so what they do is they believe that there was a leveret marriage that took place somewhere in the generations, you know, just before uh, Joseph, and that he actually had an ancestor who was a product of leveret marriage. That, that was able to continue the line. And so that's where there is a level of, you know, biological and then legal uh, connection all the way back to, to David. Now, the issue arises because a lot of these passages you see require there to be a connection genetically to David, which Joseph would not have provided. He would have provided a legal authority. And that's why they think that one of the genealogies is actually Mary's to show that Jesus goes all the way back through Mary to connect to David on a genetic level and goes back through Joseph to connect on a legal level. So th those are some of the takes on the, uh, the genealogies there. And uh, so however that all worked out, uh, God did keep his promise and we don't have a, a contradiction here. So uh, again, uh, we're just kind of going through here these so-called errors and uh, you can see the, the connection of passages here. And uh, again, it's, it's just a misunderstanding of what the Bible's saying. It's, it's not doing the requisite study. And uh, that's that's just the basics of it, all right? And uh, that's, that's why this works the way it does. So thank you for joining me, guys. And uh, this has been another episode of Those So-Called Errors.